Hey everyone, this is Dean DeCoste, and today we're going to talk about a bit of a methodology for finding people and finding people's email addresses specifically. This methodology is a tried and true method that works based on a combination of names and um, and uh, usernames. So we're on Lucas Earl's um, LinkedIn profile, and the first thing we're going to notice is he co says up here in the URL Lucas Earl. So that is first name, last name. Fantastic. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use one of our tools here. We got a plethora, and we're going to try Profit as an example. It says his email is earl.lucas. That's great um, because that's going to help validate the methodology that I'm about to show you. So if I was to take his name, Lucas Earl, and I've already done this, and I was to pop it into my permutator for his for um, common personal names, you see I already put in Lucas and Earl. This particular sheet has only the top most common, the top roughly 11 most common variations for the name and the top roughly five or six uh, email domains. And as you can see, lucas.earl is one possibility, boom, 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 we go over down here until we get the earl.lucas, which we know is already correct. What you would do is you would put the names in here, you copy them, and then you would go over here to a email validator. And as you can see, I've already done it. And as you can see, you're gonna come out with, uh, oh, excuse me, that's, uh, based on his username. Let's go back and what we're going to do is we're going to test these and see which one's right. Now I only, I, I didn't, I only took the Gmail ones. Um, more than one's going to come back right and that's okay. Um, Lucas.Earl is a possible one. That's good. Um, Lucas E is possible. That Gmail is not. Earl dot whatever. Earl dash is not. Earl dot we know is. And there you go. So we already know there's at least four, one, two, three, four emails that could actually be the right email. However, in this case, we're only interested in one. So what we're going to do before we go anywhere else, we're going to go ahead and highlight. Now, this little dot here is Vibe. Vibe uses email just to find more info. And we're going to go ahead and Vibe the one we know is right just to see what it tells us. Oh my, look at that. Vibe just validated that is correct. Now, let's see here. Lucas, Earl dot Lucas, we got that. He's a software engineer at, our, at Arbit. Ferry uh, says Comper Portugal. Um, all this information here is pretty good. And his LinkedIn. So let's punch his LinkedIn and let's see how that matches to the LinkedIn we have. Uh, there's his picture. Oh, what do you know? It's the same person. We now know that email is good. We already knew, but this is an example of how the methodology can work and do a good job for you. Now, let's say we want to just double check one more time and make really make sure that this is right. What we can do is we can highlight this entire email copy it and we're going to go to Google Sheets and we're going to check it out with a tool called um, Clearbit. Now Google Sheets uh, works in conjunction with a tool called Blockspring and Blockspring is a tool that allows you to use APIs to to utilize certain um, tools and stuff out there. In this case we're going to use a tool called Clearbit which is a really cool prospecting tool that can also um, find extra information on emails. As you can see here's some emails that have been put in here and here's information it went out and found on these people. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to open up Blockspring make sure we're good to go here uh, give it a second or two. It's got to open up over here. Um, it's opening and it wants me to sign in, which is fantastic because I haven't signed in. That means we know we're on the right trail. So we're going to go ahead and sign in real quick. And once it's up and running, what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch that email, um, which is one of the ones we know is right anyway. So we're just going to go ahead and use it as an example so you can get an idea what it means that, um, you know, what, what this tool will do for you as soon as it opens up, which can take a second. Okay, there we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all that and we're going to punch in that name. And we're going to push run. So what this tool doing now is it's going out there and trying to match that email address with information. That doesn't mean it will find something. Sometimes it will. Sometimes it won't like any tool. It's not 100%. But... Um, and sometimes you even have to run it more than once to get it registered. And partial that is because, look, we've got a bunch of emails that already showed here. So it's like, whoa, wait a minute here. Aren't these the same ones? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually get rid of all these other emails so that it has no choice but to worry about the one email we want. And we're going to try running it one more time and see if it'll work. And if it doesn't, that's okay. We've got other tools. Ah, there we go. It worked. So there we go. Lucas Earl, Cumbia, Portugal, uh, which is all information we had. There's his personal avatar. There's his personal uh, Gmail. There's his where he works, state of Utah. We already knew that, though. There's more information. His 
Twitter, so we know his Twitter now. Uh, there's his Gravatar, and we keep going. Is there any other info down here? Oh, no other info. So look at all that info. We now know this is no doubt that's the right person. We're good to go, ready to rock. Fantastic. So what we did is we started with his name, used our permutator to come up with the common ways it would work. Now keep in mind, these are only the most common ones. I do have... Um, I do have one that will come up with even more possibilities than that. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, blah, blah, blah. That's username, domain email, that's that one. Yeah, that's all the most common. Um, so yeah, so these are the most common. If you want one that will have everything on it, you go all the way over here, you put in the domain, you put in their first name, you can even do the last initial, and it will come up with 46 different versions. But to be quite honest, most of the time, when it comes to personal, it's going to be one of these 11. Uh, and it's you, and I only, notice I only use uh, like five or six of the email domains. There are 26 that, according to statistics, 95% of all Americans have an email with. I'm using the most common ones. If for some odd reason it's not one of them, all, all you got to really do is, is uh, do the same thing with these other emails. Not a big deal. So that's part one. What I want to do now is show you what part two would be of it. If it's not going to be an email, and I'm not going to use his, it's going to be their username. One of the usernames that I use, uh, and I'm using myself as an example, is Pro43. So I'm going to put in Pro43, and I'm going to do that. Now, these are the emails that are associated with Pro43. I'm only going to grab the top few, mainly because I know which one it is, obviously, and I want to make this a little quick. I don't want to take forever. And we're going to go back to my email validator program. And we're going to double check this. Now, mind you, I'm doing two methodologies, two different, two or three different methodologies behind how we're going to go about this. First, we're going to validate the emails and see which ones of these are the right emails, uh, are good. You know, I don't want to spend time chasing after ones that aren't good. So AOL is good. Uh, the Gmail is not. The Hotmail is not. The MSN is not. The Excite is not. The Comcast, well, yep, the Comcast is. The uh, at me.com is uh, the PSC Global is, the Veri isn't, excuse me, the Verizon, we got to wait a minute or two for Verizon, uh, the Verizon is not, and that's the last one. So it's either AOL or this. So let's start with the easy way. Let's just go ahead and double check with, 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 with um, Vibe, see what Vibe gets us. Wait a minute or two for a vibe to start. Oh, well, that's me, obviously. That's my picture. That makes life simple. So we know that one's good. Of course, it makes me wonder who is the... I do not have an email, an AOL account, just point of reference. I don't use AOL, or at least not that I remember. If I do, it's really, really, really old. Yeah, that doesn't really even find anything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy these into our into our um, our clear bit uh, tool here. We're going to copy both of them because we you know even though we know this is mine we we want you know we might want to find a little more information double check whatever or let's say vibe didn't find nothing let's go in here and let's see what this finds for me so we're going to run these now we're running P P pro43 at aol.com pro43 at comcast.net we know the comcast.net one is correct and evidently the other one may not even be legit anymore but look at the one here, Kent, that's where I live. Uh, let's keep going. Look at that. My LinkedIn profile, my avatar, my con I mean, everything you need. You know for a fact this is me, my GitHub, everything. You know this is me. Now, what's really cool about this is let's say Clearbit did not, the Clearbit one did not find anything. Let's copy those. We're going to go back to our Google Sheets. Uh, we're going to use another, another, um, another one of the BlockSpring uh, API tools. Uh, we're going to, this one's going to be full contact and we're going to open up full contact and open up the template, which is already saved here. Let everything load. This is going to, this is going to long video and I understand that, but this is a methodology that really needs to be, be followed. And we're going to wait a minute for everything to open up and say it's working and it's pretty and everybody loves it. And here we go. Um, let's wait for it to, to load completely. It's still spinning the spinning wheel of pretending it's doing something opening uh, and we're going to open it up all the way it should already be signed in because I haven't signed out of the of the other block spring so we're just waiting for it to pull all the way in and there it goes and what we're going to do now is we're going to put these two 
Pro 43 and AOL in here in a different order. And what we're also going to do is we're going to come down this that we're going to come down here a little bit and you see you have a few others in here. We're going to get rid of them so it doesn't get confused. We 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 want it to get confused with other emails. Uh that that just creates some problems. So we're going to just make sure yep, we're clean and we're going to run. And we're going to see what it happen what it does. Um this shouldn't take more than a minute or two. We already know that one of them is right. We already know the other one we're not sure about. Now keep in mind, in this case it found it great. Sometimes you may have to run it one, more than once or twice, but as you can see, it found basically the same type of information Clearbit does. Coming all the way back here with with um, Pinterest information, um, LinkedIn information, Pinterest, uh, and a whole bunch of other places. So complete lookup of Dean DaCosta. So there we go. That is another way you validate. So what we do is you realize that in most cases, you, there's two ways you're going to see an email address: username or first or or their name. Uh, you use a permutator I have you can email me at pro43 at comcast.net and I'll send it to you and you can come up with the variations for both their name as well as their um, username and then you just test them using this tool and then the ones that come back good you further test to help narrow it down using either vibe right in this tool or utilizing a block spring and a full contact or a block spring and um, clear bit and then you're done now it may seem like a lot of steps but you know what at this point you've tried everything else all the tools all the easy stuff didn't work so what do you have left the harder stuff and it's not as hard as you really think um, I can go through this for one person in about a minute and a half or less it just seemed longer because I'm talking and I'm trying to explain to you so everybody's on the same sheet of music great methodology great thing um, I've written about it I've talked about it before but like I said I've been getting a lot of questions about it so I thought I'd just cut to the chase have it done and be and, and good to go uh, this is Dean DaCosta and this was the talk of finding personal emails and validating them when everything else fails and keep in mind before I go this will work with work emails all you need to know is their username and let the or their name and let the tool do the rest of the work validate them stick them in the clear bit thing and it'll validate work emails as easy as it validates personal emails this methodology works with everything and like I said it's really good really accurate and once you get the hang of it it's pretty quick again Dean DaCosta and this is the email finding methodology